Hi everyone. Today we are starting the PLC training series. This is a tutorial for everyone on the Paramo Logic Controller. Now invented in 1968 by Dick Morley, the Paramo Logic Controller or PLC is a simple rugged industrial computer. This free training series is designed for everyone to learn about these controllers. PLCs are constantly evolving and continue, continue to be the best option for a variety of industrial automation applications. Even though the PLC is changing, core items remain the same. We will be discussing this in more depth for each of the components mentioned. Now, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. Now, the development of the Bramo Logic Controller, or PLC. In the beginning, the PLC typically replaced relay um, circuits. Old panels consist of general relays, timers, counters, latching relays, push buttons, indicator lights, etc. And if we see by this picture here, um, panels were quite a mess. And in fact, this is an old vintage pinball machine. Now, this type of wiring was called hard wiring because everything had to be physically wired to determine the logic. Imagine what you would do if this uh, ball hit the bumper and you want a different light to light up. You'd have to rewire everything. Or how about different points on the number of times that the bumper was hit? Rewiring was a common problem based on performance or changing process. Now the PLC simplified this situation. So what we ended up doing was the, um, the inputs were wired to individual input points and the outputs were wired to individual output points. Relations between the inputs and outputs was controlled with a program that solved the logic. And this program could be easily changed to account for changes required in the operation. So schematics was something that um, on the, hold, uh, the old hardwired program was the only mechanism to troubleshoot and maintain the machine. And um, schematics are still used today to show the wiring of a emergency stop button, inputs and outputs of the PLC. Now, ladder logic was introduced for the logic programming. And this language was chosen to keep things simple for the technicians and engineers who grew up with relay logic. So if we look at a simple relay logic, this is the ladder. So instead of reading the schematic, like you see here, we actually have a simple um, unit right here that we can see that we have our start, stop, um, output green light, and then we have a green light ceiling, and then we have a red light. So simple start, stop circuit. So very easy for um, existing people to actually read this. Now, IEC, 61131-3 introduced other programming languages for the programmable controller, but ladder logic still to this day is the leading way to program the PLC. The large established base of PLCs programmed in ladder logic and the supporting engineers, technicians, electricians, and maintenance um, personnel prefer this simple uh, programming language. Now reading the ladder logic or PL in the PLC, um, the PLC ladder logic is read from left to right, top to bottom. So just like our, our reading, the ladder logic is solved. And the output or logic from the previous rung is available to the next rung to use. We're going to be discussing this at a later time. Outputs in the logic are located on the right hand side of the ladder logic just as you see here, my output for my green light and output for my red light. And the inputs are usually associated on the left-hand side, right here. Now, when the input logic is true or on or one, this will turn the corresponding output logic true, on or one. So in this case here, if this screen was on, and this red light or this red light here was on then we have an output that will turn on so you can see it, it creates a circuit from the left side to the right side 
Now, when the end of the ladder is reached, the PLC will update the physical inputs and outputs, check communication, check memory, etc. It will then solve the PLC ladder logic again. So it, it's constantly doing this. So every single um, scan of this routine is called the PLC scan. And depending on the PLC used, the scan times vary from different manufacturers. Um, so, for example, a 10 millisecond scan time will scan your PLC ladder logic 100 times per second or 100 hertz. A 1 millisecond scan time will scan your PLC logic 1000 times per second or 1 kilohertz. And we can actually view what's going on here by hitting the view and then we can look at the actually under PLC system information and under system information we can actually see here that we have the scan times our minimum scan time right now is 312 microseconds so we're almost going about uh, three kilohertz right now so it's constantly solving that logic and our maximum scan time was two milliseconds So one of the advantages of the PLC is the ability to see visually what is happening in the logic of the controller. This is referred to as online monitoring. Troubleshooting and commissioning of the system is greatly uh, reduced by using this important feature of the PLC. And if the input or output is logically true on or one, then the output or input is highlighted. So let's uh, take a look. We can turn on our status. And you can see here of our bits that are on. And if we actually look at our physical hardware, there we go. You can see here that my stoplight or my push button stop is currently on. You can see here it's run, run through the normally closed which is going in, you see my input here is on already. So it's, it's receiving a signal here so we can see that it is on. And our output here is one. So you can see that our output light, red, it is currently lit. And I can visually see this by using online monitoring. If I hit the green push button, you can see how it highlights over, turns on my green light, I let this go, it turns off here, but seals it in. So I still have my green light on. Going back to my red, I can then stop that. Start it again. So online monitoring of our PLC really helped in aiding, uh, looking at this uh, information and determining what is wrong. So if I had a switch not working or I had a light not working, I quickly determine what that was. The other thing that we can do um, was online programming or editing of the ladder logic in the PLC. And it's now standard with most modern PLCs today. This will allow you to change the ladder logic while the machine is still scanning and solving the logic. Online editing will hold the scan, insert the new code, then release the scan. This happens all within a fraction of the time. So once again, troubleshooting and commissioning of the systems rely on this important feature of the PLC. In our case here, what we can do is let's change this light here so that when the green light's on, the red light's also on. So we'll change this to a normally open contact. And we will just accept this, save, and then we will write this to our controller. And we're going to download in our run mode. Say OK. And now what you'll notice is that we have both lights on and we can now stop it still with the stop. And we start it. So again, really depends on what we want with our ladder logic. Next level we'll do is talk about specialty devices. Now the PLC will deal with special devices like motion control and human machine interfaces in several different ways. Every manufacturer will 
I'll have slightly a different method to handle these devices. Specialty device designed PLCs will have these features built into the controller. Some will have dedicated devices and communication protocol, protocols that can protect their market share. Others use common industrial controls to communicate. One of the methods and more recently available is, the, is to incorporate the same database tags between the PLC and any of the specialty devices. This aids in elimination of errors and time to do the task. This will be discussed in future posts. Now the future of the PLC in the industrial automation. Now the PLC has remarkable staying power. There have been attempts to use higher level computer systems, but this creates problems when logic must run 24 hours a day, seven days a week with a constant scan time. The PLC will be around for a long time, but as mentioned before, it will be constantly changing. Modern PLCs include communication ports to support multiple protocols. Specializing, specialized protocols like MQTT make connection to the Manufacturing Plant Enterprise Resource Planning, or ERP, system easier than ever before. This will allow um, overall equipment effectiveness, or, or OEE, to improve significantly. This is based on, this is basically what is meant by Industrial 4.0 Internet of Things, IoT, or the Industrial Internet of Things, IIoT. Now, future PLCs will include greater program flexibility, ease, and scalability. Physically, the PLC will become smaller, have more memory, and have industrial plug-and-play options. So here we have a general um, block diagram of the PLC. And basically, again, we have our inputs. Now, whether they be discrete or analog, going into the CPU, and then our outputs here. Then we have our specialty I.O. and our communications, such as our programming, HMI, networking. And then we have our memory. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us, or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems, robust data logging, please click on this link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.